KUSI News at 6. Good evening, I'm Sandra Moss. And I'm Alan Denton. Thanks for joining us. We begin with John Soderman live outside Spreckles Theater downtown. John? Yeah, the sign says it all there. Uh, the Spreckles welcomes NFL Town Hall meeting. But there are some who say that the NFL could not care less about what Charger fans think. Dan Plant, what's going on with you across the street with all those fans? Oh, man. Well, these guys do care a lot. Let me tell you right now. Here they are. The Save Our Bolts group. And yeah, you heard it right. Save Our Bolts. <laughs> and we're going to... Save Our Bolts! Save Our Bolts! Exactly. So with that, we'll throw it to Mark. Another mistake by Development Services, and this one could cost this guy an extra 10,000 bucks on his new house. The Turco Files tonight. And I'm meteorologist Mark Mathis. Nice day today, cool day today, but some warm weather on the way. Some Santa Ana winds, some light precipitation. And also we'll have your forecast for Halloween and out in Baltimore where the Chargers will be this weekend. Mr. Rudy. Old Mark will continue our Chargers coverage with three fresh storylines. And Marco reaches out to the fantasy football crowd. Plus, the Bing Crosby season is upon us. Let's chat again at 645. Right now, this is the KOSI News at 6 p.m. As you just saw, a big night for Chargers fans. They get to tell NFL officials how they feel about the boats possibly moving to the L.A. area. While the meeting does not officially begin until 7, KUSI is primed and ready to provide coverage on all aspects of this story. KUSI's John Soderman begins our coverage from the Spreckles Theater downtown. John? Yeah, let's get right to it and tell you what's uh, going on now. Here is the deal. Take a look. The NFL is traveling to the three cities that are vying to get into Los Angeles, that being St. Louis, where they were last night, San Diego tonight, and, of course, Oakland, and listening to fans and some of their concerns. But there are some who say that this is more of a formality and that the NFL executives really could not care less about what the fans think in these cities. A little while ago, I asked uh, Councilman Scott Sherman this question. Scott, a lot of talk, especially on talk radio, that the NFL could not care less about what Charger fans think. What's your re reaction to that? Um, you know, if this was had been done a little while ago, I probably would have said yes. But with the effort the mayor has been making, working with the NFL owners directly and appealing our case directly to the NFL, I think minds are starting to change and, and opinions are starting to switch. Um, I think that's why Mr. Fabiani's rhetoric has kind of stepped up a, as of late. And I think if we get enough fan support down there to show that there is a good, solid base here, that will be like the final link in the chain to convince some of these owners that are on the fence that maybe they should be telling the Chargers to stay in San Diego. Now, one to footnote, a lot of L.A. stations here, because this is such a big deal, Los Angeles, which has not had an NFL team for some 20 years. And we'll be down here all through the night and continue to keep it updated. In downtown, John Soder with KUSI News. Well, let's check in now with uh, KUSI's Dan Plant. He is across the street from the Spreckles Theater, where some colorful Chargers fans are there. And, uh, well, they're ready to make some noise. Right, Dan? Colorful indeed, Sandra. Colorful. That is a good word for it. And here they are. They're underneath their Save Our Bolts tent. Hi, kids. How's it going? Save Our Bolts. They got the chant. You guys. Now, here we have three women here. And, you know, not to be gender specific, you guys obviously are huge fans. What's going on? How do you feel about tonight? I feel that I hope something comes up, a resolution, because we've been going through this all this year, and we don't want to see our bolts go out of San Diego. No, we don't. What's your name? Don't. Alma. What's your last name? Lopez. Alma Lopez. Hi, what's your name? Angela Powell. Angela, what brings you out? Why are you so passionate about this? Uh, well, my husband is Thomas Powell, and uh, together we just are really big fans of the Chargers, have been for many years, and we don't want to see them go. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for talking to us. Here, look, look at all these guys out here. This is awesome. Hey, man, what's your hey, name? what's up? What's your name? Hey, I'm Dave. Hey, Dave. I'm native San Diego, third generation. And, third uh, generation. How do you feel about the Chargers well, leaving or staying? You know, I mean, they're a staple in San Diego, just like everything else. We've got the greatest city in the world, without a doubt, and um, I think the Chargers need to stay here. I believe they'll stay here. They don't want us up there, right? Yeah. They want the Rams. Yeah. Well, it's And so... Good, bad, or indifferent, I've always supported the Chargers and I've supported the Padres. All right, man. Win, lose, doesn't or matter. Well, it doesn't matter. They're my team. I can't 
<laughs> loyal to the core. Okay, cool. I wanted to talk to you one one more time. How you doing? Tell everybody your name. My name is Marcos Pesqueda. All, right. All right, Marcos. Let me ask you about what we were just talking about, and that was the fact that the folks up in L.A. don't want the Chargers. No, they don't. They don't. They started a movement up there. What was that? The Rams? Yeah. T telling everybody to keep the Chargers out. Can't blame them, man. <laughs> San Diego Chargers, baby. All day. Every day. Yeah. All right. We do appreciate it. Once again, give you an idea of where we are. We are across the street from the Spreckles. Here is the Spreckles Theater right here over my shoulder. And there's a guy with a nice poster. How you doing, buddy? And you can see the line that is still forming outside of the Spreckles Theater behind that bus. And it goes all the way around the corner. Hey, you guys, we will be back in about a half an hour. Give you an update on how people are doing out here. But in the meantime, about a thousand people are going into the Spreckles Theater. And we'll see you in a bit. That is quite a yeah. turnout. Thank awesome. you very much, Dan. You have fun out there. Yeah. Our Facebook question of the day, if you had the chance, what would you ask the NFL executives? You can weigh in on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash KUSI News. Well, here's what some of you are already saying. Randy said, why waste your time? Their minds are already made up. Wilson said, no comments will convince the NFL. Only what the owners want is what matters. Michael said, it's not about the fans, it's about the dollars. Finally, Jim says, when is this nonsense going to be over? <laughs> All right, thanks for your response. <laughs> and tonight's NFL meeting is, of course, to gauge community support for keeping the team here in San Diego. Council Member Scott <laughs> Sherman will also speak, along with Mark Fabiani, the spokesman for Dean Spanos. Mayor Kevin Faulkner had a meeting with uh, NFL executive Eric Rubman late today. Meantime, Mr. Fabiani posted a question and answer session on the web. KUSI Steve Bosch is here with that part of the story. Steve? Well, Sandra, Mr. Fabiani has no real authority or influence over this process. He's a hired hand to be the foil for Chargers Chairman Dietz Spanos. And while he's become an outcast or pariah for his sharp comments over the years, it is Mr. Spanos who calls the shots on whether the Chargers stay or go. First, Mr. Fabiani expected the criticism over remarks he's made, which were at times personal and biting. Yet, he says, it comes with the job. When you say things that make people uncomfortable, you can expect to be criticized. Now to the questions and answers that were posted on the Mighty 1090s website, posed and answered by Mr. Fabiani. First, how did we get to this dire and hopeless point? Three reasons. We proposed a downtown combined stadium convention center and the city rejected it. The city's vision for downtown is very different than the Chargers' vision for downtown. We warned the city not to appoint another task force. We told the city that if they did so, it would be a complete waste of time. The task force wouldn't come up with any new ideas. And most importantly, they would run out of time and be unable to comply with the California Environmental Quality Act. In June, when we negotiated with the city, we just weren't comfortable with the quick EIR process that the city proposed. We told the city that. We said, we're just not going to go along with this. We, we can't get comfortable with the risk that it places on the team. Question, what would you say to Chargers fans? To get something done, you have to do the hard work, and the city just hasn't been willing to do that. And we, we hope our fans understand that. We don't expect everybody will, but we, we hope at least some do that, uh, that we've really worked hard to try to make something happen. Question, why did Team Spanos walk away from the table? The city feels so strongly about it. How can you feel so strongly about it in the other direction? The answer is simple, because we're being asked to take all the risk. The city is taking no risk here. Even if it has a 5% chance of prevailing, why not give it a shot? And would waiting another year change the dynamic in San Diego? So we would not, I don't think, be able to get anything done with these elected officials. What we could try to do if we had another year was a citizen's initiative to basically do what we did in Carson. Now, Mr. Fabiano also points out that the city has committed nothing to building a stadium at this point except promises. There has been no commitment from the voters and no firm commitment from the county. As you know, the city and the county have promised to combine $350 million of taxpayer money. So it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see the reaction from the crowd when Mr. Fabiani gets up to speak. Yeah. Yes, it will. You bet. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Well, let's check in now with KUSI's Ross Becker. He is here with some more local stories making headlines today. Ross? 
Sandra Allen on the KUSI News at 11 last night. This was our breaking news, and tonight we know a little more about the story. A man is dead, shot by Harbor Police. It happened on North Harbor Drive near the Holiday Inn in Point Loma, and the officer says he saw a man checking vehicles in a parking lot. He believed that man was trying to break into those cars. The officer says he confronted him. The two struggled. The officer claims the man tried to take his gun. That's when the officer opened fire. The suspect immediately attacked the officer. Uh, a struggle ensued. They both went to the ground. At one point, the officer uh, had his taser deployed. That taser did strike the suspect and the officer. Uh, the officer, during this struggle on the ground, the suspect used both his hands and attempted to take the ha officer's handgun. The officer was able to break free from the suspect as he, again, the suspect charged the officer. The officer fired one round from his service weapon, striking the suspect. The man died. The officer, who was a nine-year veteran of the force, was taken to the hospital with moderate injuries. Five people are now dead here in San Diego County from the West Nile virus. The latest death was confirmed today. In all, there are 30 cases officially. West Nile is a mosquito-borne illness that causes flu-like symptoms. However, many people who get it don't even show symptoms at all. The County of San Diego has a mosquito eradication program to help stop the spread of West Nile. The simple things you can do, report sightings of dead birds, report any abandoned stagnant pools, and empty all standing water. In a home in the 100 block of Champa Street in Vista, a television set fell on a toddler. And medics airlifted that child to Rady Children's Hospital today where he suffered apparently non-life-threatening head injuries. It's not clear how this accident happened, but it's a time for a reminder again. It's very easy for these large TVs to tip over if they are not secured. Alan Sandra? You know, and you hear about this. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't sound like it's very common, but health officials will, will tell you that a heavy television set falling on a small child is very... Not. If they're put up on a desk or on a uh, on a credenza of yeah, some kind right. and the child just grabs and right. pulls, it's going to come down right on top of them. Yeah, it topples right over very yeah. easily. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Ross. Time now for another check of weather, and it felt like a crisp fall day. Sure did, Mark. <laughs> How about tomorrow? What's it looking like? Well, you know, the good news is we have the marine layer coming back. We have that area of low pressure that we've been talking about all week long. It is going to arrive. It's going to bring some light precipitation, and uh, it's going to increase our marine layer as we head into tonight and also tomorrow morning. Some light precipitation this evening, but as we head into tomorrow evening, we got an area of high pressure, and that area of high pressure is going to set up in the Great Bay. Around the Santa Ana winds. Winds are going to kick up there a notch or two. Temperatures are going to increase for a couple of days. And then another system will push in here by the end of the weekend. All right, so 73 is the current temperature in Del Mar, 72 in Oceanside, 71 in Ramona, 73 in La Mesa, 74 in Poway. All right, so here's what's going on. Here comes this area of low pressure. Now, this area of low pressure is going to create some instability. We're going to have some light precipitation in and around Southern California. And then it's going to get out of here. It's going to create a tremendous amount of rainfall through parts of Texas over the next 24 hours. Then that high gets in here. Clockwise flow, very typical Santa Ana conditions. We're going to have very strong winds for about nine hours. The temperatures are going to warm up a little bit for us as we head into Friday and Saturday. And then another system will arrive from the Pacific Northwest, and that will bring a little bit of rainfall. Now, as far as the rainfall today, up in uh, the northeastern United States, moisture developing in the west, and our forecast for the next 24 hours, some light precipitation around all the microclimates, 66, 73, uh, for a high, 61, 77 in the inland areas, 43, 63 are your numbers in the mountains, and 60 and 86 in the deserts. All right. Warm temperatures on the way. We'll have a complete Halloween forecast. Chargers are playing out in Baltimore this weekend. We'll have a forecast for that as well. It's coming up in just a few minutes. Alan? You betcha. Catch you later. Thank you. Mark. Coming up, another case for the Turco Files. A couple trying to build their dream home called Michael Turco when the city made a mistake that will cost them thousands of dollars. The Turco Files when we come right back. Solarize with ASI and get my signature rise white gloves. called KUSI's Michael Turco when the city of San Diego changed the rules in the middle of a construction project. Turco says they approved his plans over a year ago, then changed their minds halfway through that project. Mm -hmm. 
And these people really shouldn't have the authority to make changes like mm -hmm. this in the middle of a job. You know, get it right the first time. This is petty. This is really petty. Mm -hmm. They're building a new house on a vacant lot that already has its own city water line and meter box put in when the neighborhood was originally built. The city okayed their plans, but then they changed their mind. Now they want the homeowner to spend big bucks replacing that perfectly good water line with a bigger one all the way out to the middle of the street. It ain't right! The Santana family is just about halfway through building their dream house in Del Cerro. They bought a vacant lot here with a great view, hired an architect, and took their plans to the city. New construction is supposed to have a one-inch water line from the street. I went to plan check and they said, uh, they were asking me why we had to put in a, a one inch line and they said that didn't make sense to them because there was a, a three quarter inch already existing. Um, so they talked to the supervisors upstairs at the water department. They all agreed that a three quarter inch was fine, that they could leave it and they sold me the three quarter inch meter. They okayed that three quarter inch water meter in writing to match the three quarter inch water line to the meter box under the street installed by the city years ago. But when they called the water department to install that new meter, the inspector said, no way. And he said that he could only, uh, we didn't have one, and you know, as it said, we could originally do a three quarter, but we can't, we have to do a one inch. And that's because there's been no meter there before. Even though they sold us a three quarter meter, and allowed us to do it on our plans. And in the meantime, the city repaved the street. Now they have to dig it up to run a one inch line out to the water main. That's right, they want them to dig up a brand new city street they just paved a couple of months ago. And because of the city's tough new rules about cutting trenches in new streets, he says that'll add another 10,000 bucks to the cost of the project. Initially it would have been, if we had to do it before that, it would have been just a patch, which would probably would have made it about eight to $10,000 to just dig up to the main and patch that area. Now they're requiring me to do sidewalk to sidewalk about six feet wide in order to change it, it's about $18,000. Normally the city allows three quarter inch meters when there's an existing three quarter inch line in place like there is here. But the water department claimed this line was too old. It doesn't make sense to me to have to change it. Every other house in this area has a three quarter inch meter with the exact same age of lines. When they appealed that decision to development services, they came up with a new excuse. Nobody wanted to um, do anything about it. They were just willing to admit that it was their error and that it may have been a training issue with them, but, but never agreed to do anything about it. Tough luck. Yeah. Nothing they can do for you. Nothing. Um, maybe waive $100 worth of fees, but that was it. Okay, now here's what we think really happened on this case. Insiders at Development Services tell me the three-quarter inch line and the meter could have met city requirements, but they say the water department decided to play hardball after they caught a subcontractor taking water from that line a few days before the new meter was supposed to be put in place. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said it was petty at the beginning. We have city high-level city people at development services saying we don't understand why the water department is doing this they don't think it's fair neither do i hmm. all right there will be more to come on this story right uh, well you know i hope they get a break here because the city keeps saying we don't want our brand new streets torn up here they are telling a guy to tear up a brand new city street at his expense for no good reason yeah, yeah it makes no sense no, it doesn't. all right thank you michael thanks michael and Michael Turco is always looking for ways to help our viewers. If you need a tough problem solved, give Turco a call at 858-571-FILE, 858-571-3453. Still ahead on the KUSI News at 6, San Diego's leaders are teaming up to end one of the leading causes of death in the county, the fight to end Alzheimer's. Next. But first, here's Mark Mathis with a look at that forecast, Mark. Yes, sir, Mr. Denton. We uh, did have some cooler conditions. We have some cloud cover. We got some moisture. We have uh, the onshore flow. The sea breeze is back. Cooler conditions for a day. Then some Santa Ana conditions. We'll have a complete look at your forecast coming up on San Diego's very own 6 o'clock news. KUSI. Steering clear of the wrong homes on Halloween. Safety tips tomorrow. At El Pollo Loco, we've added flavorful twists to your favorite tostadas, like our chicken and shrimp fajita, 
mango double chicken, and pineapple salsa. They say you can't improve upon perfection. We say they haven't tried our new tostadas. Taste them today. El Pollo Loco, crazy you can taste. It's happening all over San Diego. Big savings under the big yellow umbrellas at your San Diego Honda dealers. The Made in the Shade sales event is on now. Make your best offer on your favorite Honda. Always sunny. Get affordable lease deals and special factory financing on select models. Always sunny. Hurry to your San Diego Honda dealers. El Pollo Loco's new three-course family chicken meal now comes with your choice of three salads, like bacon avocado, Mexican cob, or fajita. Some decisions are made with your heart. In this case, go with your stomach. New 2199 three-course family meal. El Pollo Loco, crazy you can taste. You're watching the KUSI News at 6. Alzheimer's disease is the third leading cause of death in San Diego County, and there is no way to prevent it or treat it. Now, the county, the city, the Alzheimer's Association, and local supporters are part of a unique effort that may just help San Diego researchers find a cure. KUSI's Kristen Casado has more. We have immense capabilities here. We have nearly a, a million compounds in-house to search for new drugs. Um, we tend to work on uh, projects that are, that are more risky, that perhaps pharma isn't willing to take on. This robot at Sanford Burnham Prebis Medical Discovery Institute is one of only three such drug screening robots in the country at academic institutions. It allows for much faster testing on a preclinical level, therefore getting even closer to treatments and cures for diseases like Alzheimer's. I don't care what you call it, ladies and gentlemen. When your spouse doesn't know who you are, it's a riveting, painful, awful moment. Philanthropist Darlene Chiley was the first to give to C4C, Collaboration for Cure, a research fund strictly for San Diego scientists to end Alzheimer's. And eight researchers have now been given grants from that fund, researchers including Dr. Lutz Touts. We've made uh, progress, uh, but as you know, there is no cure for, for Alzheimer's disease, and everyone is looking for a cure. There is a lot of public funding to take the initial research steps. However, it drops off after that, and researchers are left in limbo. But we can't get that idea off the shelf and into drug discovery. That's what this fund is for. That's what Collaboration for Cure is for, is to fund that gap. It just takes one idea, successfully progressing through the human trials to get a pharmaceutical company to buy in and manufacture a new drug therapy. 60,000 people with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia in San Diego are waiting. Link together the biologists, the physicians, and the drug discoverers together in the effort to make the next generation of medicines is what's most challenging. The best minds from all of San Diego's research facilities will be able to use the technology at Sanford Burnham Prebis and at Scripps. The long-term fundraising goal for C4C? seven million dollars and all the money will stay right here in san diego kristen casado kusi news the kusi news at six continues the countdown is on to the nfl town hall meeting over the fate of the chargers we are about 30 minutes away from the start of that meeting and you can see the crowd is gathering we will take you back live to the scene when we come right back Tomorrow, good morning, San Diego. It's a Halloween win-win. How your little ones can fill up their baskets and help the hungry in San Diego. Plus, it's fall opening day at Del Mar. We're live at the track. See what's new for the Bing Crosby racing season tomorrow. It's a celebration of savings. Let's go places. This is the KUS News at 630. Good evening and welcome to the KUSI News at 6.30. I'm Alan Dunn. And I'm Sandra Moss. Thank you for joining us. Here are your headlines. In just about half an hour, officials from the NFL will be holding a town hall meeting to gauge fan support for keeping the Chargers in San Diego. This is a live look at the scene right now, and as you can see, it is pretty crowded. We'll take you back there live in just a minute. A San Diego Harbor police officer shot and killed a man on North Harbor Drive overnight. It happened after an officer confronted a suspect about an about acting suspicious in a parking lot the officer 
was taken to the hospital with moderate injuries. And the North Park Community Park was closed today after a report that a child stepped on a sharp object in a sandbox. No serious injuries have been reported and the park was reopened a short time later. Well, let's check back in now with KUSI's John Soderman. He is live downtown at the Spreckles Theater, where the NFL is hosting a town hall meeting to hear from people who want to keep the Chargers in San Diego. How's it going, John? A lot of excitement down here. The people are lined up outside of the Spreckles Theater. This whole thing starts at 7 o'clock. But uh, here's the deal. Take a look. There are a total of three teams that want to make their way into Los Angeles, uh, that being uh, Los Angeles, the Chargers, and the Oakland Raiders. And the NFL executives are traveling to all these cities and listening to what the fans have to say. But there are some, especially in talk radio, who say that the NFL really couldn't care less about what these fans think. Take a listen. The league doesn't care what the fans have to think or, or what the fans think. The league cares about what that owner says when he goes into those meetings and tells them, the other owners, why his team can or cannot succeed. And, of course, we will be down here throughout the evening with live reports coming up at 10 and 11. It's also important to point out there's a lot, a lot of L.A. TV stations here, evidence of how big a story it is, not just in Los Angeles and San Diego, but all of Southern California. In downtown, John Soderman, KUSI News. John, thank you. Meantime, KUSI's Dan Plant is just across the street where fans are weighing in on tonight's meeting. So how's it going out there, Dan? Well, I think we are having an audio problem. But yeah, we'll we're, get not, that fixed. we're not hearing Dan. We're seeing all the fans, and they're going pretty crazy yeah. getting ready for this meeting, which is about to start in 29 minutes or so at 7 yeah. o'clock at Spreckles. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll check try back to check in, in with yeah. him again. We'll get that fixed yeah. for you. Right now, let's uh, turn into uh, turn t to talk to Lauren Finney. Yeah, she's <laughs> here with some of the stories making headlines across the country. Lauren? Sandra and Alan, thank you. Well, the South Carolina Sheriff's deputy seen in the classroom video dragging a young girl from her seat and then across the room has now been fired. In a news conference today, the county sheriff said the officer isn't the only one to blame, but his actions were wrong. He gave his reasons why Deputy Ben Fields was relieved of duty. Deputy Fields did not follow proper training, did not follow proper procedure when he threw the student across the room. What she did doesn't justify what our deputy did. I don't want anybody to think that. It doesn't justify his actions. But she, again, she needs to be held responsible for what she did. The Justice Department and the FBI are investigating as well. It will be up to those agencies to determine if Fields should face charges connected to that incident. Well, Republicans have voted to make Wisconsin Representative Paul Ryan the next Speaker of the House. Today, the Republican Party hosted a secret ballot in which representatives were able to vote on who they wanted as their nominee. Ryan received 200 votes. His main rival, Daniel Webster of Florida, received 43. The remainder of the House of Representatives will vote tomorrow to officially elect a new Speaker of the House. Many Republicans believe Ryan will have a lot cut out for him if he inherits the Speaker such as factions in the party and a budget crisis. And the Republican presidential candidates are battling it out tonight for their third GOP debate of the campaign. The debate is focusing on economic issues, including taxes and job growth. The four lower polling presidential candidates, Rick Santorum, Bobby Jindal, George Pataki, and Lindsey Graham, all took the stage ahead of tonight's main debate. Several weighed in on the budget deal passed today in the House of Representatives. I think it's a bad deal, but I would have voted for it for a very simple reason. Barack Obama is the first president in American history to hold our military hostage. He knew that we needed funding for overseas contingent operations, $40 million that would go to support our troops. And he was prepared and had vetoed it unless this deal went through. So the main stage debate is underway right now. CNBC is not allowing us to show any of it to you until that debate is over, but we will have a full wrap-up tonight on the KUSI News at 10. And there wasn't much sound from the first debate that we could show you as well because it's still ongoing, but um, very entertaining. And there's been a lot of uh, back and forth between the candidates and the questions that they're receiving uh -huh. from the moderators. Yeah. So that's something new we're seeing tonight. I'm still surprised that so many of the candidates that have such 
low poll numbers are, are still in the race. Are still in it. Well, you know, they they want their voices heard. You know, so. and it's a long time off, so they figure anything can happen. And that's part you of know, the reason. You know, and that's and what we're saying. You know, this is a really long race, and we're starting to see a few changes here. As there, long so as they we'll get see. the funds, you know, coming in, it's like uh, it's like Bush did the other day. Uh, I mean, he had to let some staffers go to keep uh, to keep the campaign alive. Absolutely. You know? So, right. yeah. All right. Thank Good you, Lord. Thanks. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Let's go back now to Dan Plant. Dan? Yes. Hi, Dan. How's it going out there? Oh, craziness, let me tell you right now, we're in line. We were across the street at the theater, but take a look at the theater now, and you can see that most of the people are actually inside, and there's like a 1,000 people inside. Of course, that's the beautiful Spreckles, but here we are across the street in the Save Our Bolts land. Baby. Charges, baby. <laughs> here they are, yeah. all the way up and down. You can see all the way up and down the street here. They are going crazy. What the heck is going on? What's your name, buddy? Jesse. Jesse, what the heck are you so passionate about out here? I'm a born and raised San Diegan, and you're not taking my charters out of San Diego. Are you emotional about this? A little bit, yes. Yes. You've been supporting them for a lot of years? Since it was Jack River Stadium, back when I was four years old, yes, I have been. So you're loyal to these loyal. guys? Season ticket holder, yeah. diehard Char Charger fan. Right. Do you find that they are loyal to you? At the moment, no. No. But beforehand, yes. All right, well, you keep on fighting, Jess. Right, you keep on fighting, man. Let's go over here and talk to some of these other folks here. Yeah. How about you? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at these shoes, you guys. Look at these. Are you kidding me? That's what I'm talking about. Those are Boltman shoes. All day long. Holy cow. So you must be fan number one. I'm the number one fan right here in National City, San Diego. <laughs> yeah. What's your name? Uh, Vinny Ibarra. Yeah. Vinny. How do you feel about all this tonight? Do you feel like it's going to you know, do any good? I'm hoping the 32 owners of all teams will see it all. This is the home of the San Diego Chargers. Is L.A. a place for the Chargers? L.A.'s a dump. No! L.A.'s a dump. No! 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 L.A. is a dump. No! No! All right. So you don't think they should go to L.A.? No! Never! No! San no! San Diego! Is this your daughter? So, uh, what do you think about all this craziness out here? Um, I don't want them to leave. You don't? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and the madness is okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, one more shot. One more shot at the Bolts fans. One more shot of the Bolts fans. And we will throw it back to you guys, because it's going to get crazy. And we'll have a wrap-up for you tonight at 10 o'clock. As long as my throat can hold up. <laughs> See you guys right. later. And theirs too. It sounds like a pretty rambunctious crowd there. All right, Dan. Thanks a lot. See you later. Wow. Well, wow, a lot wow. of activity downtown <laughs> well, on say, a Wednesday yeah. night. A lot of energy down there. Yeah, some very passionate people yeah. <laughs> uh, down there. But uh, hopefully they'll stick around. I uh, love to keep them here. All right, so here we go, kids. Uh, we have the area of low pressure. It is going to generate some sprinkles around the area tonight, some cloud cover, some moisture. But the sea breeze is back. The onshore flow is back. And the marine layer is going to be back tonight and also in the morning. Then, by tomorrow afternoon, we're going to have a high pressure system begin to develop. We're going to have some Santa Ana winds begin to develop for about nine hours. Temperatures are going to warm up for about a couple of days. And then, uh, by the end of the weekend, another area of low pressure pushes in here and creates some light precipitation. So, here we go. Here's what's happening. Here comes the first low. Generate instability, light precipitation. Here's the high in the Great Basin. Clockwise flow bringing us the northeasterly winds through the mountains, foothills, and also the inland valleys for about nine hours. They will be strong tomorrow. Then, by the end of the week, Again, another area of low pressure begins to push in here and a pretty good shot to get some rainfall on Monday and Tuesday of next week. I don't think this low is going to create a great deal of precipitation for us, but it will bring us some cooler conditions through tomorrow. Now, as that area of low pressure drifts to the east, we're going to see Pacific moisture, monsoonal moisture, begin to push into parts of Texas. So flooding through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, and Louisiana as we head into this weekend. This is the same low that's going to create, create our cooler conditions, our instability, and also the uh, slight chance to get a little bit of rainfall uh, tonight and also tomorrow. This weekend, here comes the second low, and that's the one that's going to bring us a little bit of rainfall. Surf is definitely up. Check out these waves out of La Jolla today. This. Uh, uh, is uh, the Marine Room, and boy, the waves were definitely crashing along the, the Marine Room today there uh, in La Jolla. Look at that. And uh, 
High tides at right around six feet, six, seven feet. Uh, surf anywhere from around three to six feet. Uh, higher sets peaking uh, tomorrow. Minor coastal flooding on Thursday as well. Coastal flood advisory is in effect through 9 p.m. on Thursday. Okay. All right. So. Uh, 70s for the most part, 74 in Poway, 73 Escondido, 73 El Cajon, 72 Hamul, 76 is the current temperature in Chula Vista, 74 National City, 76 in San Diego, 72 in Del Mar, currently outside at 76, winds out of the southwest at 5 miles per hour, humidity at 62%, the high today 77, the normal high 72, the record high 92 in 1879. Okay, the rest of the nation. We are seeing some rainfall in the northeast United States. Washington, New York City, Boston getting uh, some pretty intense showers uh, today. And that should last through tomorrow. A little bit of rainfall pushing through parts of Arkansas this afternoon. Highs tomorrow. Now, it's going to be a cooler day tomorrow. Tomorrow really brings the coolest day all week long. 75 in Vista, 77 in Fallbrook, 74 in Oceanside, 78 in Escondido, 76 Ramona, 75 Rancho Santa Fe, 68 Julian, 78 in Poway, 75 Miramar, 77 in El Cajon, 74 in National City, and 74 in Chula Vista. All right, so the, the prep pigskin, uh, we're going to have a, a look at all of the places uh, tonight at 10 o'clock, but the temperature is going to be at kickoff. But for Halloween night, mostly clear, 68 should be a fantastic Halloween. Uh, Halloween uh, with very, very cool conditions and for the Chargers and the Ravens in Baltimore. Uh, at kickoff, 63 degrees with some light precipitation on Sunday. All right. Here we go. Here's your forecast. Powered by AccuWeather. 73 tomorrow, then a little cooler or a little warmer around here Friday and Saturday with highs in the 80s in uh, the coastal areas. And then 70s and 60s next week. Slight chance of rain Monday, Tuesday. Okay? More of the same in the inland areas as well. Uh, warmer Friday and Saturday after a cool day tomorrow. And then rainfall on Monday and Tuesday. Look at our temperatures though. 72 to 67 to 66 on Wednesday. And then in the uh, mountains, highs are going to be in the 60s and 50, slight chance of rain Monday, Tuesday. And then in the deserts, highs are going to be primarily in the 80s and 70s next week. All right, that's a good looking forecast. We'll see you at 10. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Mark. Good. Let's check in now with KUSI's Ross Becker. He's here to show us what he's working on for the news at 11. Ross? Well, I want to show you a photograph with an interesting story behind it. Coming up tonight on the KUSI News at 11, take a look. This is a group of women. They're all dressed up, but this is not some kind of Halloween party. This group of women are doing something they've never done before. And, and what's more, they say they're very happy that there are no men where they're going. Sandra, maybe you want to go with them. Uh -oh. The story new tonight on the KUSI News at 11. We'll see you then. Oh, nice little outfits they're wearing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Thanks a lot. All right, we are checking back in with KUSI's Brandy Williams right now. She's uh, all dressed up too tonight, uh, showing us a different way to trick or treat. Hi, Brandy. Right on the hey. Hi, guys. Good evening. Yes, we're celebrating Halloween a couple of days early up here in El Cajon. It's called Trunk or Treat, and I'll tell you all about it. You still have time to come out here. More details to come. We'll be right back. KUSI Weather is brought to you by Valley View Casino and Hotel. You shouldn't have to empty your wallet to fill your tank. Nissan makes America's most fuel-efficient full line and one car that uses no gas at all. Choose what's right for you, like 0% APR for up to 72 months on the 38 MPG Highway Nissan Altima or the 40 MPG Highway Nissan Sentra. Hang on to more of your money. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Innovation that excites. of big happy moments. Celebrate them with Jimboree. You're watching the KUSI News at 6. There was a time when phones the size of your shoe were considered mobile. Today's technology was unthinkable back then. Just like this Lennox SunSource home comfort system was once unimaginable. It uses clean solar power, reducing energy bills and helping the environment. It's time to live in the now. 
Call Mozzie Heating, Air, and Solar for the most advanced technology in heating and air conditioning. When you're ready to live in the now, call Mozzie Heating, Air, and Solar. Now get up to $1,700 in rebates. It's happening all over San Diego. Big savings under the big yellow umbrellas at your San Diego Honda dealers. The Made in the Shade sales event is on now. Make your best offer on your favorite Honda. Always sunny. Get affordable lease deals and special factory financing on select models. Always sunny. Hurry to your San Diego Honda dealers. Nice shot of Coronado there. Well, we are just a few days until Halloween. It's almost here. The trick-or-treaters about ready to come out. Yep, on Saturday. And yep. trick-or-treat is what the kids usually say when they knock on your door. But in yep. El Cajon, the words are trunk or treat. And KUSI's Brandy Williams tells us why that is. Hi, Brandy. Hi guys, good evening. It's a little loud up here. There are hundreds of folks up here in El Cajon on Main Street. It is so much fun. It's called Trunk or Treat. The, the city has spent over $5,000 on candy to entertain all of these kids tonight who are dressed up. Some of them aren't, but they all brought their pillowcases and their bags to collect their favorite types of candies. Adults are dressed up as well, and the costume contest is about to start in just a few moments. Let's walk around here. Let's see what's going on. Hi guys. Who are you? Josh. Josh dressed as? A clown. Ah, very nice. And you are? Gabriel. Gabriel. And you're dressed as a scary clown. Very nice. Hi, tell us who you are. Wonder Woman. Allison, Wonder yeah. Woman. Super, uh, Supergirl, um, Kathy. Kathy. And Kathy is a KUSI fan, so we certainly yeah. appreciate you that. Uh, you look very scary. Honk your horn for us. <laughs> Very nice. What's your name? William. William, did you get lots of candy? Yes. You did. Are you guys having fun up here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's so much candy up here. What kind did you get? All of it. All of it. Whoa. Okay, not only is he a clown, he's a candy thief, right? Yes. Let's go over here. How are you? Good. Hi. Where you carry your candy? I, somebody's <laughs> stuck in there. <laughs> oh goodness, what's your name? Sherry. Oh, Sherry. So hold on. So adults are getting candy as well? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I didn't know that. Very nice. Well, you can get some yourself. I would love to have some candy. That's for sure. You look adorable. Who are you? Heidi. Heidi. And how about you? Christopher. Christopher. What are you dressed as? Batman. Batman, he sure is. How are you? How are you? My name is Sandy. Sandy, you look great. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Are you having fun up here? Having a blast. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the viewers at home. What's going on up here? Oh, everything. We got Elvira here. We got all the cars. Everybody that's anybody is here. Yep. And you're here. <laughs> What's your guesstimate? How many cars are here handing out candy? How many this cars is probably, uh, over I see, yeah, I'd say over 200. Over 200? Yeah. Yes, she would know too. Wow. I, I, I work here. Oh, you do? Yeah. Well, tell us all about it. Sell it to us, sister. Do it, Heidi. Come well, on. there's actually Heidi. over 200 cars here uh -huh. uh, passing out candy. Uh -huh. um, it's fun for all the little kids sure. to come out trick or treating, get candy, and also look at the decorated cars. The decorated cars. And it's actually fun for everybody because it puts a smile on everybody's face. Absolutely. Well said. You guys are doing it up for Halloween. Last week was your Han Fest. Tonight yeah. you're having this. Yeah. What's happening Absolutely. on Halloween night? Anything else? Uh, just uh, Parties. everybody partying, having gas fun. Lamp. We're going to the gas oh, lamp. We're going to the gas lamp. Oh, yeah. uh, kids uh, going out trick or treating. Absolutely. It, it, just when everybody's here yeah. at the uh, Halloween car show, it just brightens everybody's day. Absolutely, oh, yeah. and it's so much including fun. My, including mine. Oh, I love that smile that you have. Thank you all so much. Happy Thank Halloween you. to you, and happy Halloween to all of you. We'll have more information about the trunk or treat on our website, KOSI.com. Goes until 8 o'clock, so you still have time to come out. Back to you in the studio. All right. Party, party. Thank you, Brandy. Another water war is bubbling up this evening. This time, the city of Chula Vista feels abused by San Diego. The issue is a drastic rate increase for recycled water. Right now, Chula Vista has their own pipeline for recycled water. It's what they call the purple pipe. But the city of San Diego is proposing a region-wide increase in water rates, and this would increase Chula Vista's recycled water bill by $1.2 million a year. 
we don't object to paying our fair share, what it actually costs to deliver the recycled water to us, but we think it's patently unfair that um, we're having to subsidize the cost for the North. So, you know, we're just the South Bay and we're not going to take it anymore. The city of Chula Vista has joined with local business leaders to fight the increase. The vote on water rates happens November 17th. All right, let's find out what's happening in sports on this Wednesday. Here's Paul Rudy. Well, coming up in sports, you heard from these guys at 5 p.m. This bunch is up next. You'll meet the Chargers coach of the week. And opening day part two is upon us. We'll talk about Del Mar next in sports. Closed captioning is brought to you by the San Diego Honda dealers. LT, line two, it's your wife. Thanks, Phil. Hi, honey. She can't sleep? Put her on. ASI, the white glove guys, 1-800-481-COOL. Little pitchy dog. Music to my ears. Which truck brand do you think offers best-in-class HD towing, best V8 horsepower, and has Motor Trend's 2015 truck of the year? Ram. Chevy. What do you think? A Ford. Oh. Here's the answer. That's the Chevy Silverado <laughs> HD, the Chevy Silverado, and the Chevy Colorado. Chevy, Chevy, Chevy. Chevy. It's truck month. Now qualified buyers get 0% financing for 60 months. Plus find your bonus tag and get 4,000 cash allowance on select Silverado 1500 crew cabs in stock. See your San Diego County Chevy dealer. On the next Big Bang Theory. Hello, Will Wheaton. He's back. Hi, Sheldon. Next Big Bang. Tonight at 7, only on KUSI. If the most challenging part of your day is the staying awake part, Sleep Train has your ticket to a better night's sleep. Because when brands compete, you save during Mattress Price Wars. Save up to $400 on Beautyrest and Posturepedic. Get interest-free financing until 2018 on Tempurpedic. Plus helpful advice from the sleep experts. Don't miss Mattress Price Wars at Sleep Train. Sleep Train, your ticket to a better night's sleep. Right now, there are great deals on 2015 Kias at the 2015 Model Line Clearance Sale with 0% APR for up to 66 months, plus up to $1,500 bonus cash on 2015 vehicles like the Kia Optima, Sorento, and Soul. JD Power ranked the Sorento and Soul highest in their segments and initial quality. So don't miss out on this limited time offer with 0% APR for up to 66 months, plus up to $1,500 bonus cash. Visit SanDiegoKiaDealers.com today and discover the new Kia. Extra, extra. Halle Berry's divorce shocker. As Extra uncovers new details about her surprise split, we dig into Halle's rocky romantic past. Next Extra. Tonight at 8.30, only on KUSI. You know, I, I'm looking, I just can't thank all these guys enough from, you know, it's not just the city, by the way, Dan, it's throughout the entire region that knows how important our chargers are for us here in San Diego. The NFL Stadium Circus is rolling through town again. No one calling this carnival the greatest show on earth. Meanwhile, the Bolts are back on the practice field uh, with the Bolts down Manti Tail, Dazelle Perryman. They signed veteran linebacker Joe Mays. Mays hoping his eight years in the NFL will enable him to make an impact immediately. You know, right now I'm just trying to learn as, as much as I can in the short amount of time that I've been here on both defense and special teams. And, uh, you know, my coaches, they're, they're definitely sticking with me. They're, they're letting me know everything that I need to know. Uh, my teammates are sticking with me. They're, they're showing already in the short amount of time that they trust me out there being on the field. So, um, you know, that's all I can ask for right now. And glad San Diego gave me a call. And I'm here now. I'm just uh, looking to uh, contribute. What made Sunday's loss to the Raiders so particularly difficult was the way the team lost. So many missed tackles and bad plays in the secondary. The safety, Jimmy Wilson, talks about that disappointed play and how it affected him personally. When, you're, when your number keeps showing up on the film, you know, everybody has to look, get their self, you know, so we, as a defense as a whole, we got to play better. But when your number keeps popping up on that film, you know, you got to do some soul searching, some check yourself, you know, and get back in that book and find out what, what's really going on with you and how can you fit things better. And um, that just, that's, and we got to be accountable to one another. It's important to dress for success. Just ask Keenan Allen, the Bolts' third-year man, celebrating his breakout season by rocking the PPR home blue T-shirt inside the locker room Wednesday. Tell the choice to wear the PPR shirt today. Oh, yeah. Um, I watch it every Friday. I like seeing football. I like seeing highlights. 
He's my new favorite receiver in the NFL. Hey, uh, we're closing in on week one of the tap. Uh, week 10 edition of the Prep Picks Report, and it figures to be another must-see viewing experience. The viewing parties are back. That's right. The Al Cajon Ford dealership on East Main Street will host not only the pre-show, but it will host Stephanie Kelly as she brings you highlights from the Al Cajon Ford Game of the Week, which will feature Al Cajon taking on Granite Hills. Listen, kids from both schools, it's going to be a party after the ball game. At the dealership, come join Stephanie and have fun. There will be food that should bring you out. Meanwhile, the Chargers cut a check to Matt Oliver, the Christian High coach, $1,500 for being the Chargers Coach of the Week. Here's why. It's been a very emotional ride for both you know, the coaches, the, the players, the school, everybody involved, the parents. Um, but you know what? We just tried to rally around Jay, and we, we just wanted to, to dedicate it to him the season and, and these past few games and really play for him. And then, of course, after he passed, we just wanted to really commit last week to his memory. And the kids came out and just, they just really played the best game of the year that they played last week. We just try to keep everything positive. We know Jay's in a better place now. And, and uh, so we just wanted to rally around his memory and, and you know, what, what that he's part of us and we just want to really play for him. I have a great coaching staff here. We've all been together for many, many years. We have a good system and, uh, you know, when the kids buy into the system, we usually are, are fairly successful. So, you know, we, we have to have some great kids too and we do, um, but I, I give a lot of credit to our coaching staff. Uh, they do a great job. Just the way we've all rallied around uh, not only Jay, but, the, you know, the, the tough times we've had during the season so far and then coming back last week and really playing our best game and I tell the kids it's not how you starts how you finish and we're just trying to peak at the right time well done coach oliver well done san diego chargers for recognizing coach oliver tell Del delmar's second second season officially known as the bing crosby season begins thursday opening day crowds will be about what, half of what we're accustomed to in july the 20-day meet will take us right up through the thanksgiving holiday this place is terrific i mean it really uh, has been such a great uh, uh, run for us uh, with thoroughbred racing at Del Mar. I mean, San Diego, I mean, you can't lose uh, doing business here in this town where there's such a great people and, uh, and great TV station. Uh, we're having a ball. It should be a lot of fun. We'll finish with a giggle or two. Marco Rubio attempting to tap into the fantasy football electoral college with his spot before taking the debate stage in Colorado. Hey, what's, what's the latest on Cruz? I know, but is he in or is he out? Because I keep seeing reports here about both. Okay, we'll see what you can find out, please. And what about Bush? Because he's been kind of quiet this year, but you never know with this guy. Yeah, you think we should look at who? Carson? Look, I know he started the year as a sleeper, but he's really thrown the ball around lately pretty good. All right, that's fine. Victor Cruz, Reggie Bush, and Carson Palmer. Let's keep an eye on all those guys and let me know, okay? Yeah, I know I have a debate, but I got to get this fantasy football thing right. It will be easy for Rubio to check out his fantasy team at the hotel or at the home of the Colorado Buffaloes. Check out the seating. Trump gets the coach's room, pretty nice. Uh, Carly gets a jacuzzi, pretty nice, and Rand Paul gets the bathroom where the mascots change. After a dust up, the RNC officials let Paul hang out with the lacrosse team in their room. At 5 p.m., we showed you Sir Charles and the rest of the crew at play with uh, in their TNT halftime show. Now take a peek at the Warriors poking fun at Sir Charles. Barkley, an often critic of the Warriors, Warriors style of play, saying he doesn't trust jump shooting teams. Well, the Warriors t-shirt gets the last laugh. Jump shooting teams, one NBA title, Sir Charles none. Uh, they always have dash cams in Russian cars, and it's because Russian motorists often carry golf clubs. Take a listen to this. And finally, this past golf season, we saw our a lot of it, Jordan Spieth and his caddy, Michael Greller. Well, these two kids wanting to get in on that. That's their Halloween costume. There goes the world's best golfer and his caddy, and that's pretty darn. That's better than the Russian motorist story, I think. Yeah, you? yeah that guy needs a little anger management. Yes. Yeah. Golf clubs and vodka do not mix. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't, don't. sometimes. <laughs> Since when did you get religion? Depends on where they are. Uh, yeah, that's an arguable point. I understand what you're saying. All right. It's going to wrap it up for now. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you again tonight for the KUSI News at 10 and 11. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.